Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about chapter 10, um, considering your reproductive choices. Uh, in this chapter we're going to explain the process of conception and we're going to describe the effectiveness of various different uh, contraceptive methods. Um, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of different uh, types of contraception, particularly with respect to the prevention of uh, sexually transmitted infections um, and will describe emergency contraception use. Uh, I'd also like to discuss key issues regarding planning for pregnancy. So some key terminology that you'll hear uh, in this lecture, fertility, um, that's the ability of a person to reproduce, conception, that's fertilization of an egg or ovum by sperm, and contraception, or birth control, which are methods for preventing uh, conception. A useful principle to learn uh, for uh, college when you're discussing questions of intimacy and sexual health um, are the following scenarios. Um, quite often, um, after establishing consent, um, uh, you'll still need to have a conversation with your partner uh, regarding Safe, safe sexual practices to prevent pregnancy and to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Um, some of the sorts of things you might hear um, during those sorts of discussions are excuses, uh, things like, I don't have a condom with me. It's a good idea to have replies, things like, well, I do, plan ahead. Um, other excuses you might hear, I won't get pregnant, trust me, I'm on the pill. It's not about trust, it's about staying healthy. Um, I'd prefer to use a condom. Contraception, wait, that's up to you. Well, actually, no, it's it's both people's health um, that are of concern. Um, putting the condom on doesn't make me feel good. Uh, I'd feel relaxed, more relaxed, knowing that we're both protected. I don't worry, I will pull out in time. Um, this is uh, not a safe sex practice. Um, it's not very effective, and uh, you can still both get pregnant and get sexually transmitted infections. Um, I guess that you don't really love me, that's an excuse you may hear, uh, but I do love you and uh, I would like us to be safe and protected. I'm allergic to latex. Um, well, there are many latex-free options, so preparing with a latex-free condom is another option. And sometimes you'll hear, oh, just this one time. Well, unfortunately, it just takes one time to get pregnant uh, or one time to get a sexually transmitted infection. Some basic principles of birth control. Um, there's a perfect use failure rate, which is the number of pregnancies per 100 users that are likely to occur over a one year period using the method of birth control. Um, consistently and correctly. Uh, unfortunately, the world's not perfect and um, failures do occur with all methods of contraception. So there is also a typical use failure rate, which is the number of pregnancies per 100 users that's likely to occur in the first year. Um, you, when the birth control method is used consistently, but not always correctly. And that's really a real world measure. And that's probably the most reliable re measure for uh, this discussion. So what are some uh, contraceptive uh, methods and their effectiveness. Obviously, abs abstinence is 100% effective at preventing both uh, pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections. Uh, there are um, hormonal methods for um, contraception, uh, like Implanon or Nexaplon. Um, hormonally, um, they are very effective to prevent um, uh, pregnancy, uh, but do not protect against sexually transmitted diseases or HIV. Uh, male vasectomy, again, is very effective preventing pregnancy, but does not prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases. And female sterilization, again, very effective to prevent pregnancy, but again, no protection against sexually transmitted diseases. Here are some other methods of contraceptive, uh, things like Mirena, uh, Paracopati, Paragardocopati, uh, Depo Provera, um, these are intrauterine devices um, that are very effective at preventing uh, pregnancy, um, but they don't provide uh, 
protection from sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, and again, oral contraceptives, again, they're uh, effective in preventing um, pregnancy, um, but do not prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases or HIV. Uh, going a little further, there's a hormonal uh, patch, like the Zulane patch, or a hormonal ring like the Nuva ring, uh, or, or a diaphragm. Uh, again, none of these methods uh, prevent sexually transmitted diseases or HIV, although they are effective to prevent pregnancy. Um, the Today sponge is another method that can be used to prevent um, pregnancy. It has slightly lower uh, effectiveness and does not protect against uh, STIs or HIV, um, particularly in women who have given birth previously. The cervical cap um, uh, is effective to prevent pregnancy, uh, but does not pre prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases or HIV. Um, and the male condom um, is effective to prevent um, pregnancy uh, and has some protection against sexually transmitted diseases. Um, so uh, that can be an effective method, barrier method. The female condom, similar to the male condom, uh, does provide some protection against sexually transmitted diseases as well as um, pregnancy. A withdrawal is um, not particularly effective uh, to prevent pregnancy and has no protection against sexually transmitted diseases or HIV. And then there are spermicides, foams, gels. Um, their typical effectiveness is quite low and they do not provide uh, protection in terms of uh, sexually transmitted diseases and HIV. Uh, the emergency contraceptive pill can be used within um, 72 to 120 hours after unprotected intercourse, and that will reduce the risk of pregnancy by 75 to 89 percent, uh, but does not obviously provide any protection against sexually transmitted diseases. Um, in California, that is available um, over the counter uh, in uh, many pharmacies. So let's break these. Um, many different forms of contraception into two different categories. The first are barrier methods. Uh, barrier methods are methods that block, physically block um, the sperm meeting the egg. And so barrier methods are the male condom, the female condom, some jellies and creams and foams, the diaphragm, the cervical cap, and the sponge. Um, condoms in particular do provide some protection from sexually transmitted infections. Then there are hormonal methods. Um, hormonal methods are different from barrier methods. Um, they typically provide either synthetic estrogen or progesterone um, that alter uh, female biochemistry, preventing um, the egg from ovulating um, and thereby preventing um, the sperm reaching the egg. Uh, these methods do not provide protection from sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, some hormonal uh, methods include the progestin-only pill, contraceptive patches, um, vaginal uh, contraceptive rings, um, and sometimes contraceptive injections or implants. Um, these are all effective methods to prevent uh, pregnancy. Um, just a little note here, progestin-only pills, many pills contain only progestin and no estrogen. Um, estrogen may be a concern uh, for, for women that are uh, 40 years or older, um, there's some increased risks in terms of uh, stroke uh, in women that are, uh, that are older than 40 years old taking oral contraceptives. Interuterine devices, we talked about these, Paragide, Paragard, Mariana, Skyler, um, different form, these are different forms of IUD. Um, they're, sh they're sh placed in uh, the uterus. Uh, and prevent implantation of a fertilized egg. Um, they can be very effective, 99, up to 99% effective, um, but they do not provide any protection from sexually transmitted infections. And I've talked a little bit here about emergency contraceptive pills. They should be taken within 72 hours or three days of unprotected sex. Um, the FDA has approved um, ATLA, which is available by, uh, by prescription, actually in California, this can be um, available at your pharmacist.
So when you're choosing a contraceptive method, consider how comfortable you are uh, using a particular method. Will you use that method? Um, do you feel comfortable using that method? Uh, consider what's convenient for you. Consider what's convenient for your partner and consider your risk for sexually transmitted infections. Uh, lastly, consider whether you ever want to have uh, biologically have children, um, in which case uh, things like vasectomy are not uh, to be chosen. This slide shows methods of contraception currently used by uh, college, college students in a survey. Uh, you can see that the highest or the most frequent choice was the male condom, uh, but birth control pills were also pretty popular. Unfortunately, withdrawal is used all too often. Um, uh, Interuterine devices, uh, around 11% uh, of the total. Uh, and then some uh, other uh, patches and implants um, are uh, also used. Planning pregnancy and parenthood. Uh, when planning for pregnancy and planning for parenthood, it's important to consider emotional health, uh, nutritional health, uh, it's important to consider um, uh, with age whether there are any additional risks to pregnancy um, when one is planning to become uh, pregnant uh, it's important for the mother to um, maintain good health and good nutrition and the father to maintain good health and good nutrition uh, and for both uh, partners to understand if there are any familial genetic issues that need to be checked um, in the developing fetus um, just to be sure that those uh, genetic issues are um, not going to compromise the health of a child. Um, you should also consider financial planning. Uh, children cost a lot of money. Um, and, and planning in terms of help, um, uh, having a young child extremely busy taxing task and having help from friends and family is very important um, postpartum. In terms of prenatal care uh, what's important? Nutrition, extremely important to get all of the uh, vitamins and minerals you need uh, particularly the B group vitamins. Um, stop taking drugs and alcohol because they can damage uh, pregnancy, uh, fetus during pregnancy. Uh, smoking can also damage in fact any chemicals, um, uh, sometimes medications, uh, many of them can be teratogens which can cause damage to a fetus so try to avoid taking those and check with your doctor with any medications. Um, maternal uh, age is a consideration. Some older mothers may wish to be screened, um, to have the fetus screened for genetic conditions. Um, prenatal testing usually involves uh, ultrasound um, throughout the pregnancy to make sure the pregnancy is proceeding um, as planned. Um, today's ultrasound machines are astonishing in terms of providing a detailed view of the developing fetus. Um, there uh, is uh, chorionic villus sampling for genetic um, genetic sampling uh, and uh, with that can come some triple marker screening looking for typical genetic abnormalities that occur um, with uh, women as as they as they age and, and indeed with um, uh, fathers as they age uh, and amniocentesis is another method of sampling uh, where they take amniotic fluid from around the uh, developing fetus to check for genetic abnormalities postpartum after delivery um, in that first four to six weeks um, and many women will experience uh, uh, fluctuating emotions as hormones reset that can be a time where uh, postpartum depression, um, sadness or anxiety um, uh, is experienced by um, new mothers and indeed fathers. Um, irritability with sleep disturbances um, from having a, uh, an infant in the house. Um, approximately one in seven mothers experience postpartum depression, very serious condition. Infant mortality, unfortunately, in the United States is um, is quite high. One aspect of infant mortality that's seen um, is sudden infant death syndrome. Um, you should be aware that uh, babies should be placed on their back to sleep and not on their front. Um, placing children on their back to sleep uh, dramatically reduces the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. Doesn't eliminate it, but does reduce the incidence.